This high-profile crime occurred on the 20th of April, 2009th year in the center of Moscow. First, the fire department received a message about a fire in a house on the 3rd Tverskaya Yamskaya Street. Rescuers who arrived at the scene found the bodies of three people in the apartment. Spin Eli, as well as his wife Olga and their three-year-old daughter Eliza. As the investigation turned out, the fire was just a disguise of the cruel deprivation of life, as traces of an attack were found on their bodies. On Monday morning, April 20, 2009th year, a fire broke out in the center of Moscow. As reported in the Metropolitan Department of the Ministry of Emergency Situations, the fire occurred about 6.30 in one of the apartments of the residential building No. 14 Fraction 15 on the 3rd Tverskaya Yamskaya Street. Arrived firefighters climbed the stairs to break down the door to the apartment, but they did not have to do this, it was open wide. Entering the room engulfed in fire, fire protection officers recorded two foci with a total area of about 20 square meters. Extinguishing the fire took about an hour. During the analysis of the burnt rubble, rescuers found three bodies. Initially, representatives of the police department reported that they were two women and a child, and the fire was called presumably domestic. However, the investigators who arrived at the scene after the first inspections came to the conclusion that a brutal crime had been committed in the apartment. As the media reported in the investigative department of the investigative committee under the prosecutor's office of the Russian Federation, the family of the French winemaker Pierre Spinelli became the victim of unknown persons. He, his wife Olga Spinelli and their three-year-old daughter Eliza. Hey. I'm not going to beat around the bush. You have to subscribe to the channel and like it so you don't miss new videos. Experts have already established that the winemaker's wife was strangled. Investigators also reported that the woman's hands were tied. The main version of the fire thus became arson to conceal the crime. A criminal case was opened on the fact of the incident. Nevertheless, it is known that the winemaker's business is considered as one of the main reasons for the massacre of the Spinelli family. French winemaker Thierry Spinelli came to Russia in the 2003rd year at the invitation of one of the companies. This is the first Russian winemaking company created in the image of French chateaus. Spinelli was invited to the post of commercial director. Later he married a Russian citizen Olga Kocherjina, who was also engaged in the wine business. In the year 2006, their daughter Eliza was born. The family lived in the center of Moscow. According to neighbors, the family did not swear among themselves, was calm and quiet. My parents worked a lot, my grandmother, Olga's mother, helped with my daughter. The head of the family was very well-mannered and did not quarrel with anyone, but many envied their condition, a beautiful car and such an ideal family. The floor above Spinelli's apartment was repaired by two guest workers, citizens of Uzbekistan, 26-year-old Urshit Nurmuradov and Rustam Rinatovic Karasov, both previously convicted. Nurmuradov was in Russia illegally. According to unofficial data, he was caught several times, but thanks to bribes, he was released. The workers found out that the Frenchman, who lives right under the apartment in which they were doing repairs, has an expensive Lexus car. Therefore, they assumed that there might be something very valuable in the apartment, and planned a robbery. On the night of the 19th to the 20th of April, 2009, at Easter, they specially flooded Spinelli's apartment. Dissatisfied, Thierry came to them to make a remark where he was attacked with a piece of iron pipe. Neighbors allegedly heard screaming and blows, but because of their short duration did not pay attention, and the man died from the blows received. Spinelli's body was left at the scene of the crime, in the apartment, but later it was dragged to his home. Normuradov and Karasov went down to the apartment where Olga and her daughter and Lisa were. The woman was threatened, saying that her husband is tied up above and if she does not tell where the money is, then he is only from life. They asked where the car was, but it turned out that it was under repair. All night the criminals used Olga for their sexual purposes in the return form and in every possible way mocked her. All this happened in front of a three-year-old daughter who tried to escape, but she failed. The woman begged to leave alive and not to touch at least her daughter. At the same time, 
the criminals drank wine and cognac, which they found in the victim's house. In the end, Olga told them where the money was kept, hoping that the criminals would let Eliza go, but the bullying did not stop there. The men continued to force the girl to have sexual intercourse after seeing Olga in the bath, where she resisted and was deprived of her life in the cruelest way. After that, the robbers took out of the house 20,000 euros and all valuable items. All this was observed by Olga Etieri's daughter, Eliza. She tried to escape to the norm of childbirth and the Harisas caught her and stunned her with a blow to the head, after which they tried to use gas to arrange an explosion in order to cover their tracks. The apartment was set on fire in two places, but there was no explosion. Later, Lisa died in the hands of firefighters from poisoning by the products of burning plastic trim and synthetic upholstery furniture. Garenj, Jurabai Asharov and Wahab Turiev, both citizens of Uzbekistan, were waiting for the robbers in the car on the street. The criminals left and sold the stolen goods within two days. Narmuradov and Harris tried to escape from Russia. They boarded the Moscow Tashkent train. At the Russian border, they were let through for a bribe. On the border with Kazakhstan, Normuradov was detained and sent to Russia. The second suspect, Rustam Harisov, reached his hometown, but a few months after the massacre of Spinelli, he turned himself into the Moscow police. In April, 2000 of the 11th year, two years after the crime, after several court sessions, the verdict was announced. The defendants partially admitted their guilt, confessing only to the robbery. Nevertheless, the court found Normuradov and Karasov guilty of the massacre of the whole family. They were sentenced to life imprisonment. Olga Spinelli's father Vladimir Viktorovich Kocherjan admitted that during the trial he wanted to lynch the defendants right in the courthouse, and he had everything prepared for this, but he abandoned his idea in favor of justice. The case has gained a great resonance, the question of the resumption of the use of the death penalty in Russia has been raised again. According to Vladimir Kocherjan, shortly before the end of the trial, Normuradov sent him a note in which he asked the man to insist on a death sentence, since he would not endure a life sentence. However, these words seemed to many to be a lie, and most agreed that Normuradov, knowing that he was not facing the death penalty, tried to soften the public in order to avoid life imprisonment. But Olga's father himself insisted on execution. On the air of one of the programs on May 20, 2011, he said, I think that today there is an execution in Russia. While they will be sitting there for life now, the mothers of one and the second clearly know that their children are alive. I clearly know that my children are not there. On the air of this program, a short telephone connection was established with Normuradov's mother Raisa, who lived in Jizak. On the air, she said, no, no, he will never do that. No, no, he can never do that. He can talk nonsense, but to do it, no, he will never do it. He wanted to help the investigation. Of course, he was there, he saw something, he could do something, but he took a person's life. He can never take life, never. Vladimir Viktorovich, I'm begging you, I'm begging you. He can say something, but he can't do it. It is important to note the fact that Normuradov told how he dealt with Olga Spinelli. DNA analysis showed that the male secretions found at the crime scene belonged to him with a probability of 99 and 9 percent. Detectives also found a glove in the winemaker's apartment, as well as some other small physical evidence that pointed to workers from Uzbekistan. The investigation initially had one of the versions of the massacre was the commercial activity of a businessman. Recently, he has been actively engaged in promoting the brand of wine, which he represented on the Russian market. Pinelli oversaw a project to create a wine production, which included growing the necessary grape varieties on the territory of the Krasnodar territory, and then processing it on the spot. Spinelli has done a lot to ensure that these wines are recognized not only in the best Moscow restaurants, but also at international exhibitions. As soon as the judge announced the verdict, relatives and close friends of the Spinelli family applauded.